nice thin um, rectangular grid of skin. This is also a debridement device. So it replaces wax, any type of blades where they're trying to get rid of that dermis, epidermis layer specific to plastics and burn. <clears throat> what I wanna do right now is the do's and don'ts of this device and go over best practices. The reason I lead off with worst case scenario because this, is, this situation right here, if you see the amalgatome like this, guess what? There is a super sharp blade in here that I need you to be careful of because it'll cut the snot out of you. I promise. I promise. Okay? So, in the device, there's a 2-inch head and a 4-inch head. The 4-inch head is on right now. I'm going to remove the ring here with my removal device just to show you the dangers associated with this picture. This is the blade. See where it's blue on the outside? That's where you touch it. Not on the inside. I promise you, it'll cut you and it'll cut you good. Okay, can everybody see? You got the blue, see how I'm handling it like this? That's what you want to do. Okay, so if this blade for whatever reason, upstairs, they forgot to remove it. This locking ring locks the blade in place. If you see the amalgatome with the, with the locking ring on, okay, red lights should be going off. Some kind of light should be going off, right? Danger, the blade's still in there. Please use the removal tool, not your hand, like so. There's a four inch cutout specific to the four inch head. There's a two inch cutout specific to the two inch head and then for the locking knob right here, which I'll get into in a second. So safety first, four inch into the ring. There are notches on the ring. Remove it very easily. Once at this point, don't start digging with your hands or grabbing pickups to remove it. No, 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 just turn this thing over, okay? There we go, good to go. Now we're in a good position to win. So, <clears throat> this hose, this device is also pneumatic, so it runs off air. What do you guys typically do um, with pneumatic hoses? Like, what are some good rules of thumb? Hand wash. Hand wash. Hand, yeah. Wash. Hand wash, never through the wash, right? right? Okay, so with our hose, upon coming down from the OR, just wipe it down. Mm -hmm. Wipe it down and put it aside. Why? Because it can't be submerged. It can't go through your hand washer. We're gonna introduce, or we're gonna bring it back to the kit once everything else has been through the washer. Make sense? We cool with that? And while you're wiping it down, do everybody a favor and just kind of inspect for little nicks or cuts or anything like that. Because it's pneumatic, it runs off air. It needs to hold the pressure to run the device to split the blade. Okay. So in the event it has a hole, it's not gonna hold pressure. It's not gonna work. And they're not going to realize that until it's too late upstairs. Red tag it. This hose needs to be replaced, not repaired, replaced in the event there's a nick, a hole, puncture, you name it. Okay. Okay. So we wipe down the hose. Now we're going to deconstruct the device. So I was introducing you guys to the removal tool right here. This little kind of uh, three-sided um, cutout right here is awesome for loosening this little locking knob up. Just loosen it. I'm gonna remove the four inch head from it. We are not done at this point. This is, there's something to kind of take away right now. The blade and this next step is the most important. Why? Because there's still a, a, a ring and a nut attached to this handpiece that need to be deconstructed in order to properly reprocess. So. I'm gonna grab the wrench. It's got four little tabs and you'll feel it sit pretty comfortably down here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn clockwise to remove them. Okay, so this is what I just removed from the handpiece. Super careful, the device will not work without these two pieces. And secondly, they're the most, of course, the smallest and easily replaced or sometimes broken. So just be careful. We've got, my, we've got the nut here and we've got the ring here. Make sense? Okay, so we put these back into the set without the hose. 
send it through the washer. Is now, there a box for those to go in? No. There's, a little, there's a little place in here, and there's pictures inside of the tray that specifically identify where things go. So there's, no, there's not anything external, but there's a picture inside here that would indicate exactly where all these places go. So we're washing everything down. Um, important, important, important. The handpiece does not get submerged, okay? So if you want to hand, hand wash this thing, keep it above the water, and then put it back, I'm happy with that. The reason why it doesn't get submerged is because when this thing is essentially running, you guys can see the plunger right here, and I'll do the same thing for you guys on this side. See how that's in the off position, this is in the on position. And when it's in the on position, the little door in the middle chamber opens, allowing air to go through and the blade to cycle. So <clears throat> it's only a one-way door and we don't want water getting in there for obvious reasons, right? So we've got the hose out of um, the tray and we've got everything you see here. One last step before we put it in the reprocessor and that's putting the nut and the ring back on the handpiece, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's really easy, but it's super easy to screw up too, so try and pay attention. If you can't see me, come close. Come close. Well, and tell you what. Together, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so, this little ring. See how it's got the flange to the top? Does that make sense? We've got a flange to the top. We're going to put it on our wrench. It's got a little tab for it, specific to it. So like that. What's true is that you can put it on the wrong way. And you can put the nut on. And be like, oh yeah, that kind of looks good. And technically thread it onto the handpiece. Okay? But your check here, once you've done it correctly, the check here to make sure you've done it correctly is to make sure the, the nut and the ring are flush right here. Does that make sense? Because if the ring's upside down, it's not flush and it looks kind of screwy. You see how there's a little gap in there? That's the wrong way to do it. You always want the flange to the top. And create that little area that's flush, okay? So we're holding it by the wrench. We're gonna grab the handpiece, grab the, the threaded section, let gravity kind of take over and turn the wrench. Don't turn the nut, turn the wrench, okay? Once it stops, you stop, okay? You don't have to get crazy with it and super tight. Okay, so now the nut and the ring are back on the, uh, on the handpiece. We'll put it back <coughs> into the set along with the hose and put it in the reprocessor. Any questions? Blade goes, if the blade comes down yeah. and it's removed and decontaminated, just hold the sharps. Please. And remember. Single patient use. Yes, sir. And remember, hold it by the blue. Hold it by the blue. <laughs> um, no oiling, nothing like that. Has not down here. This. Not down here. But um, for all you gear geeks, yes. there. Uh, I do recommend, I was showing you how this device works when the hand pieces in the on position and now we're pressing the on and it opens up that little door in there that's where they typically put a little sterile mineral oil in addition to around this o-ring and if they really want to get crazy they can go around the plunger here too for that real quick what is the time temperature so some of us i you know think it is, it is. Oh, hold on a <laughs> while he's doing that one thing i want to make sure we count sheet for this for or want to get some extra kind of practice in here come on up it's better that you screwed up in front of me versus prior to it going upstairs okay um thank you so much for your time shamu's got all my contact information hopefully